A long time ago, I promised a video about Pathfinder Psychic Magic in GURPS, and here it is finally. If you played Pathfinder, you might know that due to some legal agreements, Paizo could not publish their own conversion of D&D Psionics. This was an area reserved by the third-party publisher, Dreamscart Press. At least that's what I've heard. So, to fill the niche of Psionics in Pathfinder, Paizo published a book called Occult Adventures that introduced a new type of magic, psychic magic. At first, I thought that this is just D&D Psionics with serial numbers filed off, but it's actually quite different. Different enough that I have eventually grown to like the concept and introduced it in my GURPS games, using sorcery as a base. Psychic magic does not use ambient mana to produce effects, it deals with such aspects of beings as mind, soul, spirit and connection. Connection is the most important part of psychic magic. Thus, if a psychic spellcaster has something connected to the subject, they may receive a bonus to their spellcasting role, or otherwise increase effectiveness of a spell that does not have a casting role. As per Sympathy from GURPS Thaumatology pages 243-245. There is no penalty for casting without a sympathetic connection. Psychic spells are purely mental. The spellcaster does not have to wave his arms around or chant, so he is forced to pay FP. Alternative rituals are out of question. On the other hand, a psychic spellcaster must have full control of his thoughts and emotions to cast spells. He cannot cast spells if he is berserk, if his emotions or thoughts are being externally controlled, if he is suffering from a shock penalty, and 5 seconds after getting stunned or frightened. This is equivalent to nuisance effect, cannot cast after having emotions tampered with, minus 5% limitation. That is applied to the psychic power modifier for spells. Since we have to replace the magical limitation that is included in Sorcerer's Empowerment, we have to include an additional limitation to have the cost of the advantage remain unchanged. Let's make it costs fatigue 1 FP minus 5% only for sorcerer's empowerment. Improvisation costs 1 FP. FP cost of spells should not always be 1 FP. This will add a bit of bookkeeping, but is useful for balancing powerful spells. The same applies to casting times. The caster's spell repertoire must be limited to psychic spells, as psychic magic covers interactions between minds, souls, connections, spirits and so on. This is roughly equivalent to four colleges – communication and empathy, knowledge, mind control and necromancy with a sprinkle of movement spells for telekinesis. This applies the limited scope – psychic minus 10% limitation to sorcerer's empowerment. The psychic spellcaster's need for deep concentration is also represented by applying the all-out minus 25% limitation to all spells, but not the sorcerer's empowerment advantage. This replaces required attack maneuvers with all-out attack and concentrate with all-out concentrate. Psychic spellcasting is subject to repeated attempts. When rolling a critical failure on a casting roll, use the Reality Warping table from Girls Thaumatology, page 259. After all adjustments, Sorcerer's Empowerment Psychic costs 18 points for level 1, plus 9 points per additional level, and the Psychic Power modifier has a minus 30% value. If you have read Occult Adventures, you probably remember that there are multiple Psychic Spellcaster classes. The rules I outlined here should be able to represent the psychic class, but they can be adjusted easily to represent the rest of the classes. For example, this is how I treat mesmerists, psychic spellcasters who channel their abilities through their gaze. Replace the limited scope psychic minus 10% limitation for sorcerer's empowerment with limited scope mind control minus 40%. This encompasses the whole College of Mind Control with the exception of buff spells. All Mesmerist spells must be channeled through his unaided sight. Add Vision Based Reversed minus 20% to all Mesmerist spells. When rolling a critical failure on a casting roll, use the Illusory Magic Table 
from Girl Saumatology, page 258. The occultist, a spellcaster that casts psychic spells through items of historical significance, can be done this way. Replace the limited scope psychic minus 10% limitation for sorcerer's empowerment with limited scope occultism minus 30% limitation. This encompasses the colleges of knowledge and communication and empathy. All occultist spells must be channeled through his implements, rare items of historical significance, or items with a strong emotional imprint. Add requires implements minus 10% to all occultist spells. Finally, the spiritualist, who has an intangible spirit following him around, can be represented with the following rules. Replace the limited scope psychic minus 10% limitation for sorcerer's empowerment with limited scope spiritualism minus 20%. This encompasses the colleges of knowledge, communication and empathy and necromantic spells that deal with spirits. Improvisation requires the phantom to be present. This applies the granted by other minus 20% limitation to sorcerer's empowerment. The limitation value is decreased because of the incorporeal nature of the phantom. Note that even with no phantom available, the spiritualist can cast his known spells. All spiritualists must possess a phantom. This ability is ally, phantom built on 100%, constantly present, with special abilities. The cost is subject to change depending on the phantoms and the spiritualist's point values. Use the spirit meta trait for the phantom and add appropriate advantages and disadvantages to personalize it. When rolling a critical failure on a casting roll, use the spirit-oriented magic table. I intentionally omit the kineticist class. I just don't think that it fits the flavor of psychic magic. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.